interesting week in the studio i'll tell you that this has been one interesting week in the studio like we come close we could we've come close pretty much every day <laughs> to not having a show almost every day we've come close but you know what we're pulling it off we're gonna make it happen we have a great show today i can't wait it's gonna be stinking amazing so get your butt in here oh Am I supposed to, I'm not supposed to say that. Oh, hold on. I better just, I better, I need to start over. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you, my friend? How are you, my friend? You see, there's no excuse for you not pushing yourself to the next level. In order for you to create a new you, you must have a new mindset. When teams come together, we can create things that are greater than the sum of all of their parts. And welcome to Hashtag Rise and Grind. I am your host, Glenn Lundy. I am a husband to one, a father to seven, and the creator of what is going to be the number one most watched morning show in the world. It is 5.30 a.m. and I hope that you are ready to rise and grind. Just so you know, there's nothing I love more. Nothing I love more than being with here with you on hashtag rise and grind. Every morning is a treat. Every morning is a challenge, which I love challenges. And so super excited to be here. Glad to see you on the stream. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, my friend? How are you, my friend? Dude, today is Thursday. That's right. Today is Thursday, October 29th, 2020. <laughs> And what's crazy is today is the very first and the very last time it'll ever be, ever, ever. Think about this. First time it'll ever be and the last time it'll ever be Thursday, October 29, 2020. So let's make sure we make the absolute most. Fair enough? Let's make the absolute most of this absolutely incredible, incredible day. I am your host. My name is Glenn Lundy, the host of Hashtag Rise and Grind. I am also the creator and founder of the Hashtag Rise and Grind group right here on Facebook. 30,000 plus members strong. The only place online where I can guarantee you you're going to get nothing but most motivation, education, and inspiration. Do me a big favor. If you're not already a part of the group, you can go to riseandgrindgroup.com. That's right, riseandgrindgroup.com, and you can join our group, and we would love for you to be a part of something incredible. It's not just an online group. It's an offline group. As a matter of fact, right now, as an offline group, we have been raising awareness, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We've been raising awareness for an organization called My Pink Navigator that's run by an amazing woman named Bobby Nihas. So she's got this organization, My Pink Navigator, and what she's been doing is she has created community for women that are battling breast cancer, and she helps them feel comfortable. She helps them go through the the process. She helps educate them on all the things that they're going to need and to understand. And she pulls them together so they don't have to go through the journey alone with people that don't know what the heck they're dealing with. So My Pink Navigator, we've been raising money um, for them. We've been selling these awesome t-shirts, these raglans right here, as well as these regular t-shirts. Um, I sat with my wife last night and there are exactly 17 t-shirts left. Left. There are 17 t-shirts left, so I'm hoping if you haven't got one already, I hope that you'll go grab one of these t-shirts. You can go to riseandgrindgear.com or riseandgrindoffline.com or go to glennlundy.com. We try to make it easy for you, but we have 17 t-shirts left. If you grab one of those, all proceeds are going to Bobby and My Pink Navigator. We have raised currently over 8 
thousand dollars thank you for the stars anita we have currently raised over eight thousand dollars to support her amazing ministry absolutely amazing what she does so we've currently raised over eight thousand dollars the goal is to reach ten thousand dollars i want to hand her a big fat check for ten thousand dollars so if you haven't grabbed a shirt please go grab one or to make it easy you have a button right there on your feed if you're watching live on the business page you can click that button and you can give stars those stars go directly to bobby and my pink navigator all month long so anita just dropped in 2400 stars which we appreciate anita so you can drop some stars you can buy a t-shirt you can send me a venmo if you want however you want to do it but ultimately we're going to reach that goal of 10 thousand dollars and we are so close with just a couple days left we've got today tomorrow and saturday to take it over the top and i believe that we can do it this has been a fun uh week it's been a really fast month no doubt about that it's been an incredible year on so many levels and so many facets right? An absolutely incredible year. And today we're going to wrap up this series that we've been in called Haunted House. So we've been in this series all week. Uh, where is that thing? There it is. We've been in the series all week called Haunted House. And we started off, you know, at first talking about, thank you for the stars, Emily. We started off at first talking about, you know, the ghost of your past, right? The ghost of your past that still haunts you. And then from there, we went into a nice discussion of the battle that is going on for you. The battle between good and evil that exists in uh, the world today, right? That exists around you. Then yesterday we talked about your home, how important it is that we close the loops in our home and we create a safe environment where we can go and we can make sure to clear out anything that might be haunting us as far as that goes. And so we've been talking about this all week and today we're gonna add one of the most crucial, thank you for the stars, Liza, I appreciate that. Today we're gonna add one of the most crucial elements as we talk about this haunted house today we're going to talk about your ancestors because see your ancestors where you came from plays a part thank you for the stars bill mclean that's amazing plays a part in the mindset and ultimately the beliefs that you have and where you're headed so we're going to dive into that today it's going to be a super fun series first however we got to dance. That's right. That's right. We got to dance. <laughs> For those of you that know, those of you that don't know, this is the part of the show where I need you to hit that share button. <laughs> That's right. I need you to hit that share button because I believe if we can change the way people start their day, it'll make a massive impact on this planet. I truly believe that. And sometimes all it takes to change the way somebody starts their day is for you. Yes, you, Krista Bug. Thanks for the stars. Yes, you, Brian Eadlin. Yes, you, Robin. For you to hit that share button. This is also the part of the show where I want you to say good morning to me and I'm gonna say good morning to you. Whether you're watching live or you're watching on replay or you're watching on YouTube or you're listening to the podcast, however you're tuning in, make sure you say what's up. I'll go back, I'll say what's up to you as well. Also, make sure you check in. Throw me a like or a heart or a care button or a smiley face or whatever so I know how you're feeling. That's how you and I can interact in the physical even though we're hanging out in the virtual. Fair enough. Good morning, Liza. I see you there. What did you just post? Oh, it went away. Your comment like disappeared right after you commented it. Strange. What's up, Beth Lucchesi? How you doing, Mike Romano? Great to see you. What's up, Carrie Lynn Carter, Kim Fair, Melinda Gayheimer? There it is. She said she I, she said I know you're dancing, Tina Overfell. Yeah, we know she is. What's up, Tabitha Wells, John Coltonborn, Mrs. Janelle Griego is in the house. Whitney Wells, prayers going up. Hope you're doing all right. What's up, Spencer Nicholson, Vicki Everett, Nathaniel Banks. We've got Colleen Higgins. Van Houten is up in here. What's up, Suzanne Waugh? We've got Mike Higdon. Mm, this is a jam, dude. Michael Guthrie's up in here. Mr. Mike Overfeld. He says, I stink at dancing. I'm very below average. Your words have energy, Mr. Mike Overfeld. 
your words matter we did some CMA training yesterday we talked about this the things that we say they matter bro what you need to be saying is I'm an amazing dancer and I am incredibly above average when it comes to the enthusiasm with which I dance <laughs> Rick Tamburino, Melvin Rodriguez, Susan Rose, Don Sankey, Bill Schaumburg's up in here this morning. Nancy Andino de Soto. What a beautiful name. I love that. What's up, uh, Melinda? I already said hi, Melinda. How you doing, Emily? Emily's up in here. Emily Galler, of course. Mrs. Amy Bricker. We've got Cindy Conley. Bobby Gladu. Great to see you. What's up, Ray Hatcher? Tina Overfelt. Brad Smith. Everybody's up in here on Hashtag Rise and Grind this morning. I love it. You guys ready to dive in? Wrap up this incredible series? Let's do it. The wolf laying in its den is never as hungry as the wolf fighting to survive. A hungry wolf is bound to wage a harder battle. To all of you fighting battles alone, remember our ancestors in the harsh wilderness, surrounded by croaking ravens and howling wolves. To all of you going against the grain, battling the naysayers, better fight and fall than to live without hope. You might learn to survive, not let your worries and hopelessness stand in your way. Be mighty and keep strong. Be mighty and keep strong. The long road is hard, but go you must. For he who has traveled far and endure well is led to the greatest end of the journey. Be mighty and keep going. Be mighty and keep going. It will be worth it in the end. And if you stand by your own trial, and not by what others say, the right folk and kin will show up in your life. You won't be a lone wolf forever. So don't look back. Not every cloud which darkens the day brings rain. Look forward to the bright destination of your chosen path. It doesn't matter if you have to walk alone for a while. It is much better to walk alone in the right direction than be the one who waits to be taken like a fox from a trap. Stay strong. Your destiny is in your hands. Get out there and hunt it down. Get inspired with music. In case you were wondering, I have people like that that speak in my mind, in my brain, all the time. Like, dude, are you kidding me? The voice on that guy? I wish I had that guy's voice, dude. That, that's amazing. That was incredible. I am so inspired right now. And I've already watched that video like 12 times. But I hope it inspired you as well. But that's what I think about, right? When you think about ancestors and you go back in time, I think of like the Vikings and those that like crushed it and, and explored and navigated and did all of these things so that they could help be a part of creating the world that we're in today, right? I think about the, 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 the slaves back in the day that fought their way to freedom so that we could create the America that we live in today. I think of these warriors of our past that did what they had to do so that we could have the opportunity to do what we do 
today. I love it. What's up, Ben St. Hours? How you doing, Sean Jones? Also, I saw you up in here. Great to see you. Right? That video is amazing, right? So our ancestors, what we're talking about today, and ultimately, I want to go down this path real quick, this journey with you, because I want you to understand as we're in this series of a haunted house, that ultimately, the haunted house includes the people of the past that lived there before, right? All haunted houses include the ancestors. So for example, there's a, there's a haunted house and I won't give you, I, I'll spare you the details this morning, but for example, there is a, uh, the Limp Mansion in Missouri is a very well known, it's considered one of the most haunted houses in all of America and people visit this place to experience some of the scariest experiences. But when you look up the actual story of the Limp Mansion, you'll find that back in 1912, there were some awful things that happened to many, many, many different people that lived in the home at the time. The ancestors are what haunts the house still a hundred years later. To give you another example, the uh, Velisca house. This house is in Velisca, Iowa. And I will spare you the details. However, those of you that are watching on live, the sign that they have here in front of the house uh, can give you an idea of some of the things that may have gone on in that house. But it is said that people will pay $400 a night to come stay in this house because it is, it is, because it is still haunted with the ancestors of its past. You see, our ancestors have a way of making an impact on us, a long-term impact, subconsciously and consciously, that we, we might not even see it. It's below the surface, surface but they make this long-term impact. And so for these particular haunted houses that I just shared with you, born out of, of tragedy are these stories of these people in history and those stories perpetuate to this day. Now, like the haunted houses, you too have stories from your ancestry that impact you today. You see, the difference though is unlike a scary haunted house, like one of these little scary houses that we're talking about here, unlike that, you can actually choose. You get to choose whether these stories limit you or they extract greatness from you. You can allow the stories and that are that have been planted in you through ancestry to fuel you or to hold you back. There are people that have come before you. Hundreds, thousands, millions, billions that have come before you to create belief systems that you ultimately live by. <laughs> right? And so it's important that we understand and we know who those ancestors are and the impact that they have in our lives. I want to share with you an interesting stat, an interesting stat that I read as I was doing some research and studying for this week. I read this stat that one in five men will end up working at the exact same place, not just in the same business, but the exact same place that their father worked. One in five, that is a substantial number. The number drops down just a little bit for women, but it's one in six. One in six women end up working in the exact same place that their parents worked or that their mother worked. Isn't that crazy? Not just the same field, literally the same place. And what they found is that the richer the parent, the more frequent this happens. If dad and mom are making some scratch, we will choose our identity by following in the footsteps of those that have come before us. So with knowing that and understanding that, you see, our ancestors have this profound impact on our traditions, on our belief systems, like even what we eat, 
right? I'm going to play a little game with you guys today. I want to ask you a question. Drop it in the comments. Who puts spaghetti in their chili? Do you put spaghetti in your chili or are you like, no way, do not, like, chili is supposed to be beans and meat. I need you, I need you to drop that down in the uh, comments there. Are you a spaghetti in your chili type of person? I'm going to ask you some other questions as we go through this series. So I want you to I want you to interact. Tina says she does. She puts spaghetti in her chili. The other Tina says, no, she does not. And Becky says, no way. Vicki Everett and Carrie say, yes. Cincinnati freak. Cindy says, nope. Tina Kelly says, Tina Oldfeld says, I've never even heard of that. Right? Uh, right? Never tried to mix the two. Right? It's crazy. A lot of people put chili in their or put spaghetti in their chili, right? Depends on your ancestry, who you grew up around and where you grew up. We're going to play a couple other games. What do you call this? Is this Coke? Is this pop? Or is this soda? <laughs> Liza said she'd never done that, but her husband and son just did, <laughs> and she did like, is this Coke, is this, pop, is this pop, or is this soda? Which one is it? All right, drop it down in the comments. I can pretty much, I can predict where you live based on how you respond. Look at this. There's actually a map about this. How you responded can tell me where you grew up. So if you grew up on the western part of the country, you're going to call it soda, if you grew up in the north or the Midwest, you're going to call it pop most likely. And if you grew up in the south, you're going to call it Coke. Isn't that crazy? Three different names for the exact same thing. They say the reason they call it uh, Coke down south is because Coke actually originated in Atlanta. And so that story has had an influence on what people, how people define the exact same product. We're going to drop another one for you. I want you to drop it in the comments. Lots of engagement today. I hope you're awake. I hope you're you're having fun and enjoying this. Do you call this a sneaker or do you call these tennis shoes? Is this tennis shoes or is this a sneaker? What do you call it? Now, again, what you call this tennis shoe is most likely derived on where you grew up. Most of the people in the country, 61% of the people in the country, are going to call it, a, or sorry, more than 61%. Most of the people in the country are going to call it a tennis shoe. They're going to call it tennis shoes. But if you come from up north, New England, or the southern tip of Florida, you're most likely going to call it sneakers. Crazy, right? So drop those in the comments. Tina Kelly says tennis shoes. Gail says tennis shoes. Emily says she's all messed up. All, all brown drinks are Coke. <laughs> She says, I've never been to Cali. Most people says tennis shoes. Kim Fair says sneaker, right? Interesting. All right, we're going to drop another one here. What do you call this guy right here? What do you call this guy right here? For those of you that aren't watching live, I've got a picture of this bug with the armor on it. Some people call it a pill bug. Some people call it a potato bug. Some people call it a roly poly. Right? Which one do you call it? Is this a pill bug or a potato bug or a roly poly? Well, the 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 research shows that if you lived kind of in the southern uh, hemisphere of the country, you're going to call it a roly poly. If you lived up in the northern parts of the country, you're going to call it a pill bug. And then over on the western north, most farthest north sides, you're going to call it a potato bug. Interesting, right? Crazy. It's crazy how the exact same thing can be called so many different things. All right, last one. Last one. We're having some fun this morning. I got one last one for you. I see Mike Overfelt calls it a potato bug. Danielle Rose calls it a roly-poly. Michael Guthrie says roly-poly. Don Sankey just says it's a bug. <laughs> Anita says a water bug or a roly-poly. Right? Different things, right? All right. Now, we got one last one right here. What do you call this guy? Is this a firefly? Or a lightning bug? Which one is it? Firefly or a lightning bug? Your answer is going to come down to typically where you lived. Pretty much from the Mississippi River left, you're going to call it a firefly. To the right, you're going to call it a lightning bug. Isn't that crazy? 
Now listen, we're having some fun with this, but see, subconsciously, on a deep level, your ancestors, where you grew up and the people you grew up around, have planted seeds in you. You see, this is why issues like wealth and wealth gaps, right? Wealth gaps and racial inequality, systemic racism. This is why these things are so hard to battle. They're so hard to battle because literally your experiences, your ancestors have planted seeds. You didn't, they did not, not, not in a hateful way, not in a vengeful way, not in a meaningful way, just belief systems that get passed down depending on where you live. It's a firefly, it's a lightning bug, it's Coke, it's soda, it's pop, it's spaghetti in your chili or it's not. All of these little things get captured, they get passed down all the way through from generation to generation, ultimately becoming the narrative your narrative now is the narrative that you've been told over generation and generation and generation serving you well if it is serving you well then that's great the ancestry is working for you however if the narrative is not working well if you are not happy with the results that you are getting in your life it may come down to the seeds that have been planted in you and we need to do something about that you see, how you were raised, how your parents were raised, how your parents' parents were raised, and even where they were raised is ultimately determining the stories that you're telling yourself. But are they true? So ultimately, if the current stories that your ancestry has planted those seeds inside you are holding you back, how do you change that? How do you change that story, right? If you don't, if you don't like where you're headed, how do you do something about it? And this is where, this is where the cool thing comes in. You didn't get to choose your ancestors directly, but you can actually choose to borrow other people's. <laughs> you see, studying those that have reached the places your heart desires can ultimately change the narrative that you that, that has been planted in you over generations and generations and generations. For example, maybe you need to go study Emma Watson, right? You guys know her as, as Hermione from the Harry Potter series, but she's actually a huge activist over in her country, leading rallies and campaigns and changing the landscape of the entire government over there. She's an incredible human being. Maybe you need to go into um, uh, the ancestry and, 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 and dive into Martin Luther King and how he used words in such a powerful way to be able to create movements on this planet and shift the overall narrative. Maybe it's Ayanla Van Zant that you need to jump in and follow and see if she can serve something or stir something into your soul that is going to extract the greatness that exists inside you. Maybe it's Jim Rohn. Maybe you need some better financial understanding or some financial awareness. Maybe you were taught some things that aren't true, like there is a lack of money in the world and that you can save your way to financial freedom. Maybe you've been told some untruths. The, those seeds have been planted. You need to shift it. You see, listen, ultimately we all share one ancestor. You see, you, me, John Colton Board, Vicki Everett, Marilyn Wilkins, Dude, this hoodie is dope. Why did that freeze? This hoodie is dope, just so you know. It's one of the new ones. It's coming out. I know I'm, like, getting sidetracked. But, like, it's just got the rising grind kind of faded in there, right? Like, you can barely see it. See what I'm saying? It's dope. Now I'm getting a lag on that camera for some reason after it froze up. But, anyways, listen. We share the same ancestor. I say cart, <laughs> says Melinda Cameron. <laughs> Dude, this is dope. Wait till the new line comes out here in a couple days. Dude, you're all children of God, man. Terry Collins, Rick Tamburino, Amanda Sanner. You see, we're all children of God. We all share the exact same ancestor, the creator of the universe, the one that created everything. And as children of God, ultimately, you do not have to you do not have to live with the narrative that was given to you in your direct bloodline. No, you can chase that tree further up to ultimately recognize and realize that we are all brothers and sisters 
Martin Luther King is part of your ancestry. Emma Watson is a distant cousin. I, Jan La Van Zant is in your tree. Jim Rohn is a part. And all we have to do is tap into those people consistently on the daily. Tap into those that are serving, that are serving in a way that your heart is pulled to, that your passion drives you to, that you just, you feel they resonate with you. You do not have to accept the narrative that was handed to you directly. You didn't get to choose that, but you can choose the narrative going forward. Your choices, your decisions that you make, they matter. Because see, as a child of God, you have the ability and a responsibility to make an impact in other people's lives. And that's what happens. Every decision you make makes an impact on your friends, on your family members, on your coworkers. You showing up here today made an impact on me. And I, for one, absolutely love you for it. If nobody's told you that yet today, I want to be the first. I absolutely stinking love you. Listen, I apologize for going a minute or two over. I hope you can bear with me. But listen, if you need more videos like this, you can go to glennlundy.com. There's a bunch of them up there, right? You can go there if you need more videos. If you haven't grabbed your t-shirt yet, go get one. I got 17 left. Let's support Bobby. I would greatly appreciate it. But most importantly, most importantly, I want you to go out there and have an amazing day today. One of those over the top, amazing, like just incredible days, right? Have an amazing day today. And then come back here again tomorrow morning at 5.30 a.m. Dude, tomorrow's episode, Albert, my man Albert, dude. <laughs> you wanna talk about a guy who's got a story? and completely shifted the narrative. I mean, this kid, wow, that's all I can say. So come back here again tomorrow morning, 5.30 a.m. We'll do this all over again on Hashtag Rise and Grind. Have a great day, see ya. I'm focused on my physical, I'm developing spiritually and manifesting miracles I'm gonna get it started, have a party in the morning And I'm gonna wake the world, it's so alarm And I have that rising grind, have that rising grind First thing on my mind, early in the morning time Daily motivation, feeling so divine Waking up the nation, have that rising grind Have that rising grind, grind, grind Have that rising grind Everybody